Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on The Winter's Tale and we get to hear from Autolycus today in Act 4, Scene 4, otherwise, the known, otherwise known as the scene that does not end. And seriously, this is a very, very, very long scene. And Autolycus was in this scene a little bit earlier. Remember at the beginning we needed a small break from Florizel and Perdita being all cute and then uh, giving flowers to Polixenes and Camillo. So Autolycus came in and he had all of this stuff to sell and songs to sing and the clown went off with Autolycus and the two women that the clown was supposed to be taking to the festival to like buy some stuff. And that led to Polixenes then giving F Florizel crap for not buying anything for Perdita, which is how we found out that Florizel was in love with Perdita and Perdita was in love with Florida, Florizel. And they were this close to getting married and then Polixenes was upset that Florizel didn't want his dad there, Polixenes being the dad, so he unveiled himself. Uh, cursed everybody and left and now Florizel sticking to his guns wants to take Perdita on a boat to just sail away to wherever and Camillo has suggested that they sail to Cecilia thinking that they'll find a, a good welcome there and he's like and I'll take care of everything I'll write you all the letters that you need I'll tell you who to talk to you'll just tell King Leontes that you're there as like an ambassador from your father I'll take care of all the correspondence um, any clothes that you might need like we'll take care of I'll take care of all of that and they they like step aside for a second to continue going over details at which point Autolycus comes back in saying <laughs> what a fool honesty is and trust his sworn brother a very simple gentleman i have sold all my trompery not a counterfeit stone not a ribbon glass pomander brooch table book ballad knife tape glove shoe tie bracelet horn ring to keep my pack from fasting they throng who should buy first, as if my trinkets had been hallowed and brought a benediction to the buyer. <laughs> By which means, I saw whose purse was best in picture, and what I saw to my good use, I remembered. My clown, who wants but something to be a reasonable man, grew so in love with the wench's song that he would not stir his petty toes till he had both tune and words, which so drew the rest of the herd to me that all their other senses stuck in ears. You might have pinched a placket. It was senseless. It was nothing to geld a codpiece of a purse. I would have filled keys of that hung in chains. No hearing, no feeling, but my sir's song and admiring the nothing of it. So that in this time of lethargy, I picked and cut most of their festival purses. And had not the old man come in with a hoobob against his daughter and the king's son and scared my chows from the chaff, I had not left a purse alive in the whole army. So Autolycus, as a thief, is having a good day. Remember, he had robbed the clown before when the clown was trying to help him stand up. And what he has done now is, you know, he came and he had all of these trinkets and things to sell and he managed to sell all of them. And while he was selling all of them, he looked inside people's wallets and purses to see how much more money they had so that he could make note of whose pockets to pick later on. So then his, his like sidekick um, says that he really needs to learn this song from this wench. So while that whole thing is going on, it takes the people away from Autolycus over to the singing and Autolycus is able to go through and take all of the purses that he had his eye on. Now, why exactly he's saying this out loud? It's a, probably a plot device, just give some time on stage, anything like that, but it does set up the next moment to be rather funny because Florizel and Camillo and Perdita come back in and Autolycus is like, oh my God, did they just hear what I was saying? Oh my God, if they heard it, then I'm, I'm so screwed. And they're like, oh, you poor gentleman, how are you? And he's like, I'm a, I'm a poor gentleman. And they're like, yes, you are. And your clothes aren't doing you any favors. So you need to switch clothes with this guy Florizel here. 
so like Florizel strips and Antolicus strips and they switch clothes. Meanwhile, Camilla says to Perdita, he's like, you know, you got to take a hat and you got to cover your face so that as you and Florizel are going to this boat, you can leave the town without anybody recognizing who you are, which is also why he's having Florizel change clothes with Autolycus. So by the end of it, Florizel's like, yeah, not even my dad would recognize me in this. This is great. So they go off to get on the boat properly in disguise. And Camilla's like, great, because now I'm going to go tell Polixenes that Florizel has run away, in which case Polixenes will go after Florizel to Cecilia and I can get on that boat and then I can get home to Cecilia. Woohoo! So Camilla, th Camilla thinks he's got it all figured out. And I'm curious to think if you think that it's going to work. But believe it or not, we're not even at the end of the scene yet. Because when they all leave, Autolycus is still there and has some thoughts on what he has just witnessed that we'll get to hear in tomorrow's monologue. So I'll see you then for that. Mwah.